Right here we have the water vine. This is quite a big one that I'm holding over here, um, which is great for drinking water. It's naturally purified and when you cut it, as long as the water comes out clear, then it's safe to drink. You want to avoid milk, milky, sappy, white colored liquid. See they travel for very long distances so you can get a lot of water out of it and it tastes great. Now I'm not going to cut this one down because I've got a flowing creek so there's just no need for me to kill this vine. So that was the char material that I charred last night. As long as you get the first fire, then you can of course make your char. So now I've got a tin of char and that'll last me for several days. Um, you'll notice that I am using a ferro rod to get that ignited. However, I don't need to use that. Just a piece, a sharp rock even, on the side of a high carbon steel blade um, will produce a spark uh, sufficient enough to get um, an ember going on that char material is way more efficient as you can see it only took one strike for me to get that that spark into the char um, as opposed to taking just a tinder bundle on its own um, that could take several several strikes and uh, you could still have difficulties if it's wet on a day like today it's overcast it could rain at any second so I always want to have dry tinder and char at hand Time to check on the lines. Oh, that one looks like it's got a bit of... Oh yeah, it's got something on it. Oh, catfish. That is definitely going to be cooked up momentarily. Just look at that slowly cooked, partially smoked Beautiful catfish. I've been hunting out this afternoon for about three hours. Um, heard some rummaging around in the bush. I uh, managed to stalk pretty close to him and take him, take him down with my bow. So I'm gonna go and check him out. There he is. I can't see my first arrow. 
but he died a pretty clean death. Right here I've got a little smoking rack. I've actually brought some uh, rock salt with me so I've lightly salted the meat and now I'm drying it over the, uh, the fire and smoking it out. I smoked my meat throughout the night for about three hours, took it off, hung it up from the top of a tree, get it out of the way of any hungry animals and uh, now I've got it back on. You can see it's kind of really nice and dry on the outside layer. Look at this beautifully smoked raccoon meat. I cooked this up um, in a pot with some water, kind of like make a little stew and uh, it's just unbelievable. It also tenderizes it a little bit because it's very tasty but it's tough. Gosh man, this weather is up and down. One day sunny, one day is overcast, one day is extremely windy. The next day it looks like it's going to rain, one night's warm, like too warm, <laughs> one night's so cold and freezing. You just really don't know what you're getting um, here in wintertime in Florida. <laughs> Look at that. Now that's how you fish in survival mode. It's just a piece of fishing line and a tiny hook. Remember, the smaller the hook can catch bigger fish, but the bigger the hook cannot catch small fish. That is a meal from the whole day today. It's a good size. So I've got my fish over here, I'm going to put this on and start frying that soon. However, I just wanted to mention um, that something to carry, which is such a useful thing um, when you're planning on kind of harvesting all of your food off the land, um, is salt. I like to carry rock salt and not only does it replenish your electrolytes, it's one of the key electrolytes um, to avoid things like hyponatremia and that, but it flavors your food and it stores food. If you manage to hunt or, or catch something that's it's a bit bigger than what you can eat in one sitting, then you can preserve it with salt. Mm. Large mouth bass, cooked to perfection. That was a big fish. I'm um, extremely lucky. I've been eating two meals a day. Um, I've been eating raccoon uh, two nights in a row. I've got raccoon for another four days because I smoked it. And if anyone ever offers to, for you to try raccoon, don't say no. It is absolutely fantastic, especially the, with the fat. So just going through my morning routine of checking myself for ticks. Most ticks here don't carry Lyme disease and it usually takes 24 hours for the bacteria to be fully released from the ticks anyway, so I have to check myself every 12 hours. So I got a squirrel this morning with my bow and arrow.
very happy about that. I'm pretty hungry. But as you can see, I just want to show you guys what I'm doing with this. Um, uh, I'm ash cooking it. So I've actually just got a, a, a coal bed. All right, there's no flames. And you simply just chuck the animal right on top of that ash bed. And as you can see, n hardly anything really sticks. Some of the coals stick initially, um, but then once it starts cooking, uh, they actually separate quite easy and it gives a lot of flavor to the food and quite nutritional. Um, the benefits of eating ash are, are definitely healthy for you. So this is going to be nicely roasted in a bit. Mm. Anything that I hunt, anything that I f uh, catch by fishing, I have to make sure that I don't leave a scent trail all around my camp to attract raccoons and bears. Um, first of all, you know, if you're going to be um, carrying food on you, you always want to make sure that you've elevated it way out of the bear's uh, potentially smell range and hopefully out of its reach. So definitely slinging it up from a tree um, is, is your best bet. Don't drop blood and bits of flesh and that all over the floor near your campsite because then you're just asking for raccoons and bears and things to come along and bother you. And it's, it's not safe. So it's a, you've got to keep your campsite immaculate, and this is very important. Keep your fire a decent distance away from your actual campsite, like right behind me. I've got my hammock and my tarp right there, and my fire is probably a good 10 meters away. So I t I'm very um, uh, conscientious with making sure that my animals are field-dressed or gutted a well away, at least 100 uh, meters away from my camp, so that they get attracted to that area and not to my area. Um, so always something to keep in mind. Not only do we want bears in our camp because they're dangerous, but I don't want raccoons around because they tend to, to steal the food that I already have and, uh, and keep me up during the night. So this morning I woke up to a fantastic day and I decided that after five days at my other camp it was time to go on a little walk about and, uh, and go deeper into this, into this jungle. So I've, uh, it was long and arduous. I spent three hours traveling about a mile but um, I found a pretty good location and I'm getting ready to set up camp. I've got a tiny little tributary stream coming off the main creek right there. Not, no fish, it's too, it's too shallow. Um, but, got my drinking water. This is where I'm going to set up camp here. Why you pretty much don't want to sleep on the floor in the jungle. Spiders everywhere. Oh look! Another one. Oh look! Another one right next to that one. Gosh, man. So I just um, set up camp in a different location, and it's right next to this stagnant small pond. And it's funny. Camping, camping near the river for the last nine days, never saw a single gator. And now, in this little pond, there he is. Huh. You can see the tip of his nose and his tail out of the water. <laughs> 